All right, guys, how's it going? If you're like me, you love AI and you love AI for videography, design, script writing, whatever it may be. Um, but I do believe that it should be used as a tool and not a crutch, not something that you totally rely on, but something that you use to enhance your creativity. And on the AI um, subreddits, uh, Facebook groups and things like that, that I have seen uh, lately, a lot of people are complaining about when they're trying to create a logo. Um, and I'll pull up just a few of those here. So people complain about, you know, create something they really like, like this image, and it doesn't spell what they want correctly. And they get really frustrated about it. Here's another person who created some cool, like, 80s neon looking stuff. Um, but again, they're asking if someone can help them make Dolly spell things correctly. And then the last one here, which is a really simple, cool logo of a tree. Um, same thing. Everybody's out there screaming for a fix. Well, you're in luck because I have the fix and I'm going to show you how to use this tool, um, Dolly or ChatGPT or Firefly or Midjourney um, or Ideogram, any of those image generators to properly create a logo. Um, now this can be if you own a business and you just need to make a logo for your business or if you're a graphic designer and this is gonna save you a lot of time and it saved me a lot of time because I'm kind of just a content creator. Like I do mostly video production, photography, but I do a handful of graphics for companies. I've even done full branding packages for companies and I'm sort of falling back into that a little bit because of this, uh, just because it's making it so much faster, so much more creative and all that good stuff. So let's get straight into that. So for this example, I've created a fictional character basically. His name is Mike, he owns a pizza shop people call him Big Mike. He's also a police officer. So I'm getting real detailed with it so I can show you how how nuanced you can really make this, right? So Mike is a police officer. He owns a pizzeria called Big Mike's Slice. Big Mike's Slice. Um, and he's a police officer and he's really known in his town for not just being a police officer, but his canine unit, um, Lucky, is his German shepherd that's with him all the time, including he hangs out at the front of the restaurant. So this is a total fictional character, but this will just show you how specific you can get with these things and how good it really is. Um, so we're in ChatGPT, we're here in Dolly. I've already got the prompt in there, but I'm gonna read it to you so that you kind of get a gist of some of the stuff that I word it so that we can then turn it into not only a good logo, but something that can be scaled, vectorized, duplicated, made different versions, color changed, Etc. Etc. And we'll get into the text problem, right? So, uh, this is the prompt: create a logo for my pizza restaurant. All right. So that's the that's the command. Start with the command. Here's the context: my name is Mike, but people call me Big Mike, and my restaurant is called Big Mike Slice. Incorporate. Okay. So there's the context. Now I'm going to tell it specific things that I want in there, right? Incorporate a pizza, duh, uh, and a German Shepherd dog because that's his uh, best bud and the town knows him for that and he thinks it would be really cool to incorporate, right? Uh, make the image three colors max. Okay, you can add colors. I'm gonna show you how to bring it into Illustrator and really customize it yourself, which is really what you should be doing. So you can add colors later, but it is good to get three separated colors. That way when we vectorize it, <clears throat> you're not just working with black and white or you're not just working with something that doesn't have you know a dynamic look to it. Um, with no shading, no gradient, so that it's easy to vectorize. Okay, so you gotta realize, ChatGPT is using all this trained data, as well as uh, Bing and Microsoft's search engines to source a lot of the stuff you're talking about. So when you tell it to do these things so it's easy to vectorize, it knows what you're talking about, okay? You don't have to go into detail about that. And then the last sentence, also make sure it's on a plain white background. Very, very important. At least in my workflow, that, that's been super important. And if we go back to these other examples, that one's on a blue one, that's not problematic. These are problematic. I mean, you can see the uh, logos are actually hanging off the design. Yeah, those, those are gonna be really hard. And this is like equally as hard, maybe even harder. But this is all just from my personal experience and creating some logos for different brands. But anyways, let's get into it. So I've told you the prompt. I'll read it one more time. Create a logo for my pizza restaurant. My name is Mike, but people call me Big Mike. And my restaurant is called Big Mike Slice. Incorporate a pizza and a German Shepherd dog. Make the image 
three colors max with no shading, no gradient, so that it's easy to vectorize. Also, make sure it's on a plain white background. Okay, cool. And we're gonna press enter. And a lot of times, ChatGPT will give you two options. Um, I found if you ask it to give you two options, it will put the two options on the same image or canvas and it'll cut off the edges. So I got to where I just don't even say that. Um, all right, so here's the two images that we got right off the bat. This one's actually pretty cool and really slick and an easy image to vector. Okay, what you're looking for is like hard lines, no gradients, no shading, no overlaps of anything. I mean, I think we've got a max of four colors here. This one's cool. Also an easy vector. Not so easy on this, but totally doable. Like if you like this, I wouldn't totally um, steer away from it because you could easily cut that there, reshape the dog's face, um, and then, you know, fix the text. We're gonna go through how to fix the text, by the way, I promise. Let's, let's, let's tell it great, good job. <laughs> Give me two more options. And guys, I will say, I've used uh, Ideogram. At first was kind of the best one for logos and um, used Firefly a little bit, Adobe's uh, image generator. But I will say Dolly is so far the absolute best. Okay guys, here's a good example of what I was talking about. Right, so it's cutting off the image. And those, it's unfortunate because those are pretty good. Some of them are good, some of them are a little weird but but i'm trying to get one so great but the logo is falling the logo is falling off the image try again so we're going to try this again third time's a charm if this doesn't work we might just go back up to there and i gave it some pretty detailed parameters but you could actually give it more parameters you could even tell it to do it in the style or as a famous graphic artist that you find online that you like. Uh, you can also upload images that you like that you know could be inspiration for the software. Big Mike Slice. These actually look really cool. Um, I really like these. Let's see. Again, falling off the edge. I tell you what, man, this one's cool, but it just doesn't look like pizza. You know, like we want to get it to where it's almost there. And you know what? I think we might just try this one. I think we might just try this one. All right, let's just try one more time. Great, try one more time. And guys, this is a hit or miss type of thing. Like I've actually made some branding packages for like a soccer club and uh, another company, a concrete company. And even though I did get to a final product, it took me almost a week uh, between, you know, coming up with concepts and then finally finding something that worked. Um, this one's not bad. This one's weirdly cool. I don't know. It's, it's kind of uh, luminous though, like showing just the one eye. Man, but I really like that. And see, it, it just kind of screw up there. Or we might just, just do this one just for demonstration purposes. But let's go ahead and download that. So what you're going to do then is you're going to go to a... You're going to want to go to vectorize.ai. Or you can find something free. If you can find a GPT that will do this, that would be great, but I have not been able to find it. But you, basically we need to convert this JPEG into a SVG or a vectorized file. So I, I just got through doing one. Uh, so if you click here, go find your image. Okay, you're just gonna upload your image, that's all it is. Okay, you upload it, as you can see, it's gonna process. Now I think with vectorize you get 20 to 40 free vectors a month. It might even be less than that. I hit that pretty quickly because um, I was like going through all kind of iterations for a soccer club and uh, I had to pay $10. So that's where I'm at. $10 a month. I mean, for me, it's my work. It's my profession. If it ever just goes three or four months where I'm not using it, I might go cancel it. But for the most part, I am definitely using it. Okay, now we've got our vectorized file. And just to give you an example, I don't know, I'm gonna zoom in on the screen, but you can already see like the pixelation's gone in those two. Uh, it's really sharp, slightly smaller, but that's all good. Then you're gonna wanna open up some kind of image illustrator of some kind. There's Adobe Illustrator is what I'm using and what most people probably will use. And you can get it for you know, relatively cheap. I think if you just get one of their softwares, it's $10 a month. But you can also use Corel Draw. You can use a program called Flexi if it's still around. There's all kind of like just search um, SVG editor or something like that or Adobe Illustrator alternative, cheaper alternative, whatever have you. 
whatever. If you're watching this though, you know, either tell your graphic designer <laughs> to watch my video <laughs> or you're probably using Illustrator, but that's what we're using today. So we're gonna go find our file. And of course we want the SVG, not the PNG or the JPEG. That was the working file that came straight out of Dolly. And we're just gonna drag and drop this in. Okay, cool, here it is. And you can see already it's all separated out, which is super, super cool. I mean, it's kind of halfway there to where we want to be, right? Now, when you drag it in, it's going to open it as a S, like it's, it's opening the SVG file. I actually don't really want that. So I'm going to copy, put it on its own little canvas here. And apparently I left some stuff behind. So let's just go back, I want the whole thing. Okay, cool, whoops. And when I hold shift, it will scale proportionally. All right, so there it is, pretty cool. And if you zoom way in, you can see there's some imperfections there, but at that size, it's probably not gonna matter. And I can show you how to fix that. So if that's a concern, no problemo. So getting to the text thing, we've gotten here, right? And big me's sleazy pizazar. Yeah, that's not right, right? So that's what everybody's complaining about. Uh, and it's not a huge deal. We're gonna fix that right now. We're not gonna do a huge like dive into how to fix this whole thing. It's more about the text, but yeah, let's just get it down to this one design here. And as you can see, I'm just kind of going through and deleting stuff like the background and all that. I do like the way the text is laid out though. Like I kind of like that, right? And I do like the text, like it's cool. But here's, here's the philosophy behind not using the text, even if it spits out something perfect for you. It's because it doesn't exist. It's not a real font. It's looking at millions of fonts across the internet and coming up with its own. Now, there's a whole separate video we can make about building your own fonts with, with ChatGPT. But that's not what this video is about and that's not what it did for you. It gave you the text, even if it spit it out perfect, the font doesn't exist. You can't retype anything. You can't use that same font in a separate piece of marketing. Like let's say you're putting out an email newsletter and like your main font is the one on your logo and you wanna use it as the heading. You can't do that because the font doesn't exist. You could find something close, but if you're trying to just be prim and proper on the nose and do it right, this is just not gonna work. Um, so we've got our separated image here. Everything is separated out. I do like the way it's laid out. So we're going to go with that. So let's just get rid of big and me's. <laughs> okay. Then we're going to jump over. Of course, if you're using illustrator, you probably will have access to the, the font store, which is not really a store because it's, it all comes with creative cloud. Right? Um, so we're just going to go in here and we're going to find something that we like. And I don't really like the way Adobe's got their font categories lined up here. It's just not very good. They give you a couple tags and most of them are dumb in my opinion. This one, passion. I just saw one, this passion project. I like that passion. Now, how do I find out what you are? Komu. So we're going to click Komu. I really like Komu. So we're going to come back to illustrator here. We're going to click our little pen tool thing. Um, we're going to go ahead and up that scale. Um, and we're gonna type in a big in capital letters. I like all of that. And then let's tell it Komu, Komu. Oh yeah, this is looking good already, guys. I actually really like it. You don't have to use that skill thing too. I just do this, yeah. And let's see how she fits. This is actually gonna look really cool. All right, now this is something I've ran into before and I'm sure there's some kind of technical. I'm honestly not even like trained to do this, but. I've done it for a living for a long time, so whatever. But because the letters are different here, I just don't think it's gonna work. Like I could resize some stuff or whatever. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna ditch having it on both sides. And this is all for example purposes, guys. Like there's way more creative people out here than me that will be able to show you that kind of stuff. I just wanna show you that you can use Dolly to create awesome logos. Okay, so we've got Big Mike here. We're gonna put the center right there. Big Mike slice. Okay, and then slice is gonna be a lot larger. You know what we might actually do? Let's take Big Mike's, let's group it. Oh, it's actually just one thing. I didn't have to group it, but let's take it up here. We're gonna put slice there. And then here, what we'll do is we'll make an arc. Okay, and there's a lot of ways to do this. Normally I'll just do it on a path, but 
just for quickness sake. Yeah, this is all just for example, right? Okay, and then maybe this, we put pizzeria. And we want a sub font for that. So let's find something that we can get thinner. It doesn't have to be exact. And let's capitalize it all. I forget the hotkey for that. So let's just rewrite it. P I Z Z I. Yeah. Okay. And we're gonna take this. We're gonna throw it down here. And it doesn't have to be big. In fact, I would like it not to be big. Okay. Now, one other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the whole logo, group it. Okay. Now, let's lower that down. Let's put that there. Highlight everything. Go to window, align, center it all up. Bada bing, bada boom. Control group. And bam. Now you have your full Mike's, Big Mike's Slice Pizzeria. With, with the dog, with the pizza, with everything. Now, normally, like when I do this kind of stuff, and I'll just give you an example. Like I've been working on this one for about a week and a half. It's for a soccer club, and I've been working on an alternative version <laughs> for about a week and a half. Uh, these take a lot longer, and I think they're better, but this is just for example purposes and to also stress why you should not settle for or use um, the fonts that Dolly's going to spit out. And because this was all on white, it was really easy to take that out, right? But like I've seen some people in the comments help people out. You can see on this one, what I did was, and if I can move that out, yep, I'm gonna move this out, right? What I did was, you can see it says Southern Alliance under there, but I added these just to cover up, like that's what it spit out before, right? And that was no bueno. So we just used the pen tool. You could do that probably in Canva or something, I'm not really sure. But you just cover it up with the same color, all that jazz, and put your text on it and voila there it is so anyway guys i hope this was helpful for you and if you would like and subscribe to the channel if you like content like this from a little old nobody from mississippi and uh yeah we'll put out some more videos peace <laughs>